Mm, all right. Nevertheless, I know I'm going to kill you. <laughs> hmm. I mean, you probably are. I'm gonna put down an. I'm gonna put down an island, and then I'm gonna spend uh, two in order to, in order to cast the albino troll. Uh oh. Hmm. All right, island. Mm hmm. Vebula time. It's becoming more powerful. Yoink. Let's do this. All right. So, uh, I really should just hang on to this. I'm going to put down a mountain. I'm going to pay two in order to cycle my scrap. Draw a okay. card. I'm going to swing out. Two, three ones in the air, and a four, four on the ground. That's a sacrifice it at the end of the turn if I attack. Uh, sacrifice it if it attacks. All right, I'm gonna block the Vevalu with my Veil Serpent, and I'll take six. Nice. All right, and damage resolution time. Your Veiled Serpent is toast, but so is my Vevalu. And I am going to end my turn. Mm, okay. Um, during my upkeep, I'm gonna spend the two in order to make sure that uh, Albino Troll stays alive. Hmm. Um, do 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 do. The big problem is that I don't actually uh, uh, that the scourges are most certainly going to kill me shortly. All right. Oh, a three, uh, a three, I'm three one with flying island, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna swing at you for three. Yep, they take three damage. You know, you figure it's something as evil as a three one with flying for three could only come from a set as diabolical as Ursus Saga. Although others have, of course, tried to emulate the evil. I do have to include black mana when I cast No Rest for the Wicked. Okay. The only card I've casted successfully over three games in a row. And I'm going to swing at you for six. Yep, I'm down to five. You are in the red zone. Turn is yours. Hmm. Uh, huh. Trying to think. Well, right now I really should just be con concerned about staying alive. So I'm gonna put down Gaia's Cradle. Then I'm gonna spend uh, four in order to cast Pendle Drake. And then I'm gonna nice. swing at you for three. Swing it for three. Two, three. Okay. And, uh, I will end. Alright. Unfortunately, Mr. Gerdad, that is game. I'm going to kill you this turn, and uh, there is a high probability you do not have an answer for this. I'm gonna go into my combat step and swing into you with two, three ones in the air. Alright. I'm going to have my Pendle Drake uh, block one of the ra ra Ravenous Scourge. Alright, damage resolution time. Mm, that blocked three, Ravenous Scourge Pendle is now is dead. dead. No Rest for the Wicked is going to return the Ravenous Scourge from the graveyard to my hand. And then during main phase two, I'm going to Arc Lightning you to death again. Mm, yep, yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure you... No, you um, I'm pretty sure you have to choose three uh, different targets, but I'm okay with that. Anyway... Well, the re so I am reading what Cockatrice says is the translation for the gibberish on this on this ancient and archaic artifact from the year 1999 or what have you. Arc lightning deals three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. Mm -hmm. So I, I get to choose you once and deal all three of it to you. Mm, well, technically you have to choose me three times and, uh, and deal one each time, but yeah. No, but it's... It's three damage divided by one, and you are the one and only target I'm choosing. Mm. Mm, all right, then. Anyway, that is game. I am actually... Uh, I was relatively certain I was going to come in, uh, come into this uh, losing, but I am so... I'm a bit salty that I managed to get both uh, both combo pieces uh, after I had already won in game two. Can I, can I at least show the combo, Mr. Cloud? I mean, we could do an extra game if you want. I don't really want to go, have go, an next, go for an extra game because game two does show what the fuck my deck honestly wants to do, and it does but, show off at least uh, some of the really broken shit that's here. And we can continue showing off the broken shit that's here uh, with our uh, uh, with our uh, uh, deck show off. 
If you say so. All right, let's go to the exploration portion. Mm. All right, then. Explore the, uh, the, the specific library. combo that I wanted to show off was a combination between Sunder and Paragon Drake. If, if you've got five mana, this will just straight up fucking win you the game, especially if you happen to have multiple Paragon Drakes in your hand. This combo, very explicitly, is fucking game catastrophically ending. Like, goddamn. Especially if you've got stuff like Guy's Cradle and uh, the even uh, the even more uh, stupidly busted exploration, uh, a card that I drew uh, during uh, game two and uh, game two and three that I wanted to use but I could not use uh, because I uh, because I was dead by the time I was able to actually attempt to cast it uh, was um, a Somaphore and Somaphore. Somnophore. This this card just casts Frostbite on fucking everything as long as it goes unanswered. And although you've got some answers for it, it's not necessarily a thing that uh, it's not necessarily a thing that everyone's gonna have answers for. Mm. Also, the uh, untap uh, the untap the, the make this spell free shit that bl that Blue's archetype is focused on in this set is horrendously broken. Rewind. Mm. Uh, having multiple copies of Rewind in your hand can shut out an opponent's turn for multiple fucking turns. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> mm. And then, of course, I already showed off the Disruptive Soon. A card that I didn't actually get to show off, like, at all was uh, a Grafted Skullcap. And you might be wondering why the hell I'm running Grafted Skullcap. Well, it's because I'm also running Exploration. With this, with Exploration and Grafted Skullcap, I effectively have infinite mana, and, and the additional draw every turn is honestly much more worth it than uh, than the the constant discard. Like I was never uh, I, I was never at a point except to, during game one where where I got mana where I got mana screwed out of not having the correct mana. I had enough mana; it just wasn't the correct colors. Uh, and let's see, yeah, you're showing off the ritual. Uh, I, I want to see that Thundering Giant got reprinted at some point, but I don't really remember. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, di I'm pretty sure it did. Like if you if you put it if you put it in with Giant Support, that is, because like, I think Giant Support has gotten okay. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, Bedlam! Bed well, we know why the fuck this never got Why the fuck this never got reprinted? I was because considering running Dragon's Blood, are and then I'm way like. Better than this. Uh, what? Because substitutes are way better than this? Uh, I don't think so. I mean... I mean, because you, you, you only need the Bedlam effect for one turn. If you, if you can make it so that an army of your opponent's creatures that was, that was pre presumed to be able to block any given attack force, if you play a Well, that would be exhaustion at that point, dude. Well, you might as well pay two and cast fucking magmatic chasm which makes it so that creatures of a particular type cannot block i think it's non-artifact creatures can't block or mono or monocolored creatures can't block you might as well play something like that if you wanted a bedlam because bedlam does cost four you get to use it over multiple turns but it shouldn't take more than one turn to completely destroy your opponent's chance of winning the game i mean that's the dual philosophy for dual masters at the very least but ah uh. Uh, I was thinking of running Dragon Blood, but I decided against it specifically because I was having I was having problems getting into my win con. Because despite how powerful these cards are, they don't have any tutors, and you are running the only tutor that I think is even available in the set, Gamble. And Gamble comes yeah. with such a high cost uh, during the mid game that I wasn't going to run it. I also was looking at Fluctuator, but nah, I wasn't running well, enough cycling are... for Fluctuator yeah. to really matter for me. I mean, you don't want more than one Fluctuator on the board, because all of the right. cycle costs in this deck cost exactly two colorless mana. So, you you will only... It's, it's not like it, the other one will give you two mana. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah... Uh, this this set has got some absurdly powerful shit in it. A lot of it comes with with some pretty significant downsides. We talked before before about how uh, how inefficient Echo honestly is. Thing is, the creatures that have Echo in this set aren't really all that bad. Like Goblin War Buggy is a two two with haste with, for two. It, granted, we would eventually overpower that, but you know, for the time that this released, that would have been fucking absurd. And a Critian and an Albino Troll, these are way overstated monsters. It makes sense for them to have uh, the Echo uh, uh, tag, uh, tag on them. 
Like, very little in this set, aside from a Thundering Giant, can actually run over a Critian. And even then, a Critian, a Critian uh, doesn't actually worry about uh, Thundering Giant all that much. Ah, Ursa's Armor. A six-drop artifact that says whenever a source deals damage to you, that damage is reduced by one. It's the Paper Mario Defense Badge, motherfucker. Yeah, but it's too expensive for that. Huh. Honestly. It says you, because all you need is a Copper Gnome and you can cheese it onto the battlefield. Uh... I, I forget, it, does Copper Gnome just allow you to place artifacts on the battlefield? Copper Gnome is a two-drop artifact creature token with power and toughness 1-1 one, one that has the ability, pay four colorless mana, sacrifice Copper Gnomes, choose an artifact card in your hand, and put it onto the battlefield. Mm, so it's a Quicksilver amulet that you only get to use once. Yes. Uh, I I'm sorry, dude, that's still expensive. You're still paying six f uh, for that armor then, and then you're losing board, uh, board presence for it, too. I mean, get I I'd say a... T a turn four Ursa's armor sounds pretty good to me. Uh, at the time, certainly, but look at how much damage. Uh, look at how much damage my optimal my optimal turn up uh, uh, turn five is. I get I get six damage on the board, and I shut you out of the game for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Paragon Sunder, man. Th this combo. I am glad that Sunder specifically is only allowed in in uh, vintage because this because this thing is fucking uh, disgustingly broken. Um, did you find anything in your deck that you found it disgustingly broken? Disgustingly broken? Um, yeah. Well, all right. You, you want you want me to you want me to give you an example of a card that was so like overpowered that I did not want to use it? Yes. Yeah, so allow me to to look it up real quick. It's a black color card that is enchantment type. So as long as I put in the correct parameters, it should come up. Add type. Uh, it's not Vile Requiem, it's not Vampiric Embrace, but it is a card that has an effect every single time your opponent casts a spell. Oppression. Whenever okay. a player, whenever a player casts a spell, that player chooses and discards a card. I, like, I'm, uh, for three drop, I'm, I'm all set with that. I, I don't need to fucking control my opponent that hard in order to win the game, because that is fucking evil. Yeah, Making there it so is a lot of individual evil shit in this, in, in this set. <laughs> Ursa's block is renowned for having a bunch of evil shit in it. Uh, there, our first appearance of Karn is actually here, but Karn yep. is very specifically for the Phyrexian Artifact deck, and um, I wasn't going to run that, so. Yeah. yeah, just, I mean... I mean, I, I, I mean, I have a conscience. Gerdet's conscience is questionable at best, but yes, we decided very that I we, want to freeze all of your shit, Cloud. All of it. <laughs> if we wanted to kill our opponent, we had to accept the funeral cost. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, Urza Saga, hilariously broken on specific things, but honestly, it doesn't really play all that well together. Like Paragon Sunder was the only uh, was the only real combo that I noticed. I'm actually surprised. Excuse me. I'm actually surprised you didn't find anything deadlier than that. Because this set gets fucking stupid. Mm, Holy yeah. shit balls! Mm, but most of the stuff that that that, that is super deadly uh, uh, comes with uh, significant problems. For example, um, uh, no, it's not Shivan Hellkite. Shivan Hellkite is pretty much just a uh, a uh, uh, slightly better retrain of Shivan Dragon. So. Or tainted Aether. Whenever a creature comes into play, its controller sacrifices a creature or land. <laughs> yes, black is a lot of really powerful stuff here. Like, I hate myself. Cast a spell. I hate myself. <laughs> I hate you too. <laughs> all right. So yeah. All in all, this is a really fun set. Not a really fun set to do in limited. Although it doesn't work all that well. To, uh, all the, all that well together. Learning about these uh, hilariously broke the hilariously broken shit in this block, or rather in this set specifically, is really fun to go back to. I agree, and it is nice to see that just because the card is old does not necessarily mean that it was not a fully thought out as to its complete efficacy in the game of Magic the Gathering. Mm, rewind exploration. Nyam, 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 nyam. Alpha. Yeah. Alpha.
far. Alpha's only big problem are the, pow- are the power eight, and even then, uh, like the biggest, <laughs> the biggest problem in the power eight is arguably ancestral recall. Mm. All right, everyone. Um, tune in next time for our Magic Gathering set explorations when I get to pick out the next set. Will we continue Yay. with yours as block? Probably not. We only need to go in, uh, to this level of power every once in a while. Diffusing power. All right, everyone. Be safe. Peace.